What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to take out the internal components from my systems if you want to go ahead and build a bar top and use those components inside of a bar top. Now as you can see this is not a very large computer but it's still big enough that it will not fit your usual size bar top. So as you can see I have a few parts here that I want to show you. This is a StarTech bezel wires kit and you can just pick this up on Amazon. I'll leave a link below. Next up is a heatsink for an Intel branded CPU. It doesn't matter what heatsink you use, as long as it fits for you, and as long as it's got the pattern of an Intel CPU, okay? Next up, you're going to need a torque screwdriver. I believe this is a T15. Yep, it is a T15 bit. Um, so you will need that to get most of the screws off of the PC. First thing you want to do is you want to take off the cover and that's very simple. You just pull on this latch right here and the cover comes right off. Next thing you can do is you can pull up on the power supply and pull up on the CD-ROM. To get the hard drive out you want to push down on this green latch and you want to go ahead and kind of move it forward and up and the hard drive will come right out. You can go ahead and unplug it and it'll also have a power cable plugged in. So unplug both SATA and power cables. Put the hard drive aside. You can bring back down the CD-ROM assembly here and go ahead and press this latch as well and pull back and up on the CD-ROM itself. That will let you get to the hard drive and you're gonna again press down on this, press forward towards you and up on the hard drive and go ahead and unplug the cables. And now that you have the hard drives and the CD-ROM out of the way, let's go ahead and flip this back up and we can get rid of these cables here. This is one long cable, you just unplug it from the system board right there. Put that aside. And here's the power supply. So it has these two cables over here and then it has a longer one that goes over there. So let's get rid of that one. Unplug it over here and we can unplug it over here as well. Now the power supply, once it's in this position, you can just pull it right up and it comes right out. After that, you can go ahead and get rid of the SATA cables. There's a little bit of a hook right here that holds them in place. So go ahead and get them out from under there. And then there's another plastic hook here. Get them off from there. And you can just pull them off of the system board like that. Okay, so after that, you can bring this back down. You're gonna see these three indicators right here that are green. Three plastic latches that you can just pull up on. And that will get the front cover loose. Okay, so we're getting there. At this point, you can basically grab this entire, entire plastic assembly right here and just pull it right up. Okay, so here you have the fan, the CPU fan, and this plastic that's attached to it. Now, you can or cannot use the, this whole assembly that I'm taking off, the fan and this plastic piece. It's pretty big, so it might not fit your, your bar top. If it does, you can use it, if not, that's what the uh, other heatsink and, and fan that I showed you at the beginning is for. So let's go ahead and get it out of there. So it is connected to the motherboard right here. So you want to go ahead and unplug it. Just pull it off. And in the front, you can see that it has a plastic tab right there and another one right there and another one right there. So you just want to squeeze in on those and it'll just come right out like that. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug all of these cables right here. Those are basically the cables that go to the front USB ports as well as the power switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug those. This tiny one here is for the front speaker. And one last one. These are all color-coded. 
so you don't have to worry about not being able to figure out where they go afterwards. It's pretty easy to do. So at this point, everything is pretty much out. Now we just want to get the actual system board out. So I'm going to use the screwdriver and I'm going to go ahead and take out any screws that I see. Okay, so that was a total of eight screws. I believe on this one you have to take out the uh, heat sink as well before you can take the system board out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, now that the heat sink is out, I should be able to take the system board out, slide it back a little bit, and just kind of work it out of the chassis. And last, we're gonna go ahead and remove the front USB ports, and you also have your headphone jack here and your power switch. So to do that, there's a screw right at the end over here that we wanna get out. And if you wanna move the tiny speaker that's in here as well, you can do that. So it has two screws that hold it in. And here's the speaker. And then for the USB slots right here, assembly, we're just going to push in on it and the whole thing along with the power button is going to just come loose. And we just want to make sure that we get these wires out of here without damaging them. So we're just going to put them through the frame here. And here's the entire assembly in one piece. So basically at this point, what you need is the board, you need the power supply, you need this front assembly here with the USB ports, and you need uh, SATA cables, and you need the power cables. The speaker is optional. I would suggest you put it on there though. It's good to hear the fault beats and uh, stuff like that. And then you need the two hard drives. You don't need the, the CD-ROM and you need the new heatsink. Again, it could be any brand. This is just one that I have left over from another CPU, an Intel i5. So basically, let's say you had this one. We're going to go ahead and install it. And with this particular one, you just press down and it locks. Okay. Now this one already had paste on it. So if you're if the one you get does not have paste on it already, uh, you're going to want to get some thermal paste. And then you want to go ahead and plug in the power. Now notice that the connector on this board has a little bit of a tab right there and it's not going to match exactly to this little channel here. Okay, but that doesn't matter because you want it to, you obviously want that little channel to face the tab over here and it doesn't matter that it's not perfect as long as you align the pins, be careful to align the pins Make sure that they're where they're supposed to be and then just kind of force it in there, right? That's all you want. It doesn't matter that it's not a perfect fit because it's going to work perfectly. We can go ahead and plug back all of these cables from this front assembly here. And again, like I said, they're all color coded. So you can see yellow, green, and blue. Yellow, green, and blue. And then this one only goes in one way because there's a blank. So it corresponds to the connectors on the actual board. So I can plug that in. And 
I can plug these back in. Just take your time and be careful and make sure that everything goes back like it's supposed to go and all the pins go in the correct holes and that you don't bend any pins while you do this. All right, so at this point, you can go ahead and start putting in the power supply. Now, this is the part where you have to get creative as far as how you put the stuff into your bar top. There's a million ways that you can do it. It's whatever works for you. Point is that now everything's out of the chassis and will definitely fit. I will show you a video of my personal bar top. It's not using these exact components, but it's the same idea. And I'll show you how I went about putting everything into the cabinet and how I went about screwing everything down. So I'm just giving you a general idea here, but you know, you this for example, you can just you know throw it in there and hold it down with something on the bottom. Point is you have your USB slots available right there, plus the ones on the back. Okay, so if you need to plug any extra USB devices, you have you still have them here and you don't lose those. Now the reason you need the StarTech cables is because if you notice the power button is right here in this front assembly and ideally you want to have this outside of the cabinet so what you can do is you can splice this white cable here that goes to the power button okay and you can take one of the StarTech cables splice that one as well here in the connector okay and then join the two together you know you can solder them you can use electrical tape whatever works for you and then you can put this power uh, button wherever you want on the exterior of the cabinet. Now what I do, and I'll show you again later, is I also splice this end and then I connect this other end to an arcade button that sits on the outside of my cabinet. And that's how I turn the cabinet on and off. And again, I will show you that a little later. Okay, and now this, again, just play with it, see what works best for you. You can cut this little tie right here and it'll give you like an extra inch or so. Um, but I found that if you set it up like this, it fits pretty good. Everything reaches where it needs to go. So I'm going to plug these cables back in. Like this. And then I'm going to plug this one back over here by the CPU. Let's go ahead and continue. So next up, you know, you would hook up your SATA cables right back to where they were. Just these two ports up here. And then obviously the other ends would go back to your drives. This dark blue one goes to your uh, to your SATA 0 and this one goes to your SATA 1 or SATA 1, SATA 2. This is your boot drive, 2 terabyte and if you have the high-end system this would be your your 5 terabyte right here. Again this is all about getting creative as to where you put the drives. I will give you an idea of how you can mount them a little bit later on. So that's it for the drives and then you want to go ahead and put back your power cable which goes over here and then that's going to go ahead and power your drives as well. So that is basically it. Um, again, I'm going to show you in a minute how I set up everything in my, my bar top. But it's, as you can see, it's very easy to just get everything out of the case and then get it assembled outside of the case. If I were to plug in my drives right now and, and I were to plug, it, plug in a power cable here, um, I can just go over here, hit the power button and everything would, would fire up no problem. Uh, same as if it wasn't the case. So this is what you would go ahead and install inside of your cabinet and then you would be ready to go. Okay, so if we take a look at the back of my cabinet here, you can see that I have a lot going on. So bear with me, but there's a lot of, you know, the wires that you're seeing up at the front there. You know, those are all the controls and everything. Um, I have three hard drives in here. So there's a lot going on, but point is that it's all about getting creative. So if you see how I mounted the drives, I'm using these brackets that I got at Home Depot and they work perfectly. So I'll leave a link to those below as well. And that's basically how I mounted the drives just right behind the, the monitor. That is the bracket that holds the monitor in place. And I mounted the hard drives right to that, to the, uh, to that bracket there. And then if you look at the bottom here, 
that is the power supply on the right side there. Again, I use the same brackets. There's one here, hard to see, but it's going across the bottom and then on the side of the power supply. And I was just very careful to dig into the power supply with self-drilling screws and just very careful that I wasn't drilling into any part that contained electronics. Um, and then you have the video card, which is, I have a very large video card. Um, yours will probably be facing a different way again, but you can get creative and, and do it however you want, however it fits best. And then behind the video card, it's, is the, uh, my system board with the CPU and memory and everything else. Okay. So if you look at the bottom, you can see those little rubber feet right here. That's how I mounted the the motherboard to the uh, to the bottom of the cabinet. Um, those are just little rubber feet, uh, plastic feet, I should say, in the shape of an L, and those will keep your your system board nice and steady and secure inside of the cabinet. And it kind of rises, you know, raises it an inch or so off the bottom, which is nice. Um, so again, I'll link those below as well. So here's. A look behind the video card at the motherboard again it looks messy but it works everything stays where it needs to be and uh, that's all that matters really back out here and look at the bottom there's the board back there and the plastic feet that keep it in place and then here's the the power supply so if you look at the configuration of one of my systems, you can see that it would be the same idea. You have the power supply on the right there, and then you would have the board right next to it. If it was up to me, on, in, in this case, I would probably configure it just as you see it, pointing to the back, just like that. And then I would have it so that the exhaust here faces the back, and I would cut a hole in the back uh, in the back door uh, so that that faces out of the cabinet and then the video card would come this way like this and that would be pretty much it pretty simple stuff and then by extending this power cable here I would come out with it right out to the back door and I would connect it to a to an arcade button which I actually forgot to show you so this is basically what you would do here's the power cable right here Coming from the board, it's extended, and it's tying right to a micro switch for the arcade button back here, which then ends up outside of the of the cabinet right there. And that's it, guys. It's pretty simple. Okay, and one other thing I wanted to show you guys is basically the control system. And for that, all you have to do is buy a mini pack or iPack Mini, uh, you can call it either way, um, from Altimark. And basically what that is, is this little board right here. And what this little board does is you wire all of the buttons up to this board, and then it pretty much sends keystrokes to all the emulators. And the way you're gonna wire this is by using a diagram that I can send to you. So if you guys are actually going through and following the project and you wanna build one of these, um, just ask me and I will send you a diagram that shows you what all the cables go to and it's very simple All you have to do this already comes with a harness So when you go to their website, uh, you'll choose the option with a harness and I will leave a link to that in the description So basically all you do is you get this harness with this board right and then you plug the harness in right to the pins there Couldn't be any more easy than that and then basically these are color-coded so my diagram will tell you for example, you know orange goes to player one button one you know purple goes to player one button two and player one start for red you know etc that's basically how easy it is and then these at the end already have uh i mean they're already crimped and everything so you don't have to do any cutting or soldering or anything crazy these just plug in right to the uh micro switches in the back of arcade buttons you just plug them right into the terminals and this is all arcade you know basic arcade building stuff you can find a ton of information about um, you know wiring buttons and stuff like that online, but again, it's just very simple It's just like I'm telling you now and then you know You have your USB cable which plugs into here and then the other end plugs into one of the USB ports on the system on the, on the PC 
and then this is your just your ground wire which goes to every button it's like a daisy chain so it goes from button to button and every button needs to have a ground wire on it so it's pretty simple stuff so i hope you guys learned something uh if you guys decide to go ahead and and build any any bar tops with uh with this video uh let me know i look forward to those and i'll see you guys in the next one